right, for this video, we're going to take a look at the fixture block drawing uh, next on our list of, of our uh, SOLIDWORKS certification um, parts that we're going to review during this course. Um, so what we're wanting to do right here, um, we want to build this uh, parametric model here. Um, to do that, um, we actually need just a little bit more information than is typically on one sheet. So you will have this from time to time where a, um, a drawing, a single drawing, does not give you enough information uh, for the working drawing. So we do need a secondary sheet. So in that, this one is a two-sheet drawing. So if you go to the second sheet here, and I'm going to just scroll down to it, um, we can actually see a little bit more information right here where we can see these cutouts that are a little bit more difficult to see up here. We can't quite get the full scope of these cutouts right here from this view. We can get an idea of what they are, but if you were to take all those dimensions I just had on that other sheet and try to place them on here, it muddies everything up quite a bit. Um, so it's just a little bit cleaner if we can go ahead and put that information on the other side. Uh, one of the things you'll notice right here, um, this is a section line. So we have a section view to essentially give us a better view of this surface right here. If I was to take that section line and come straight across, we wouldn't quite have the same view right here. Um, that's why I went up just a little bit so you can see that full picture um, of that top surface right there so we can see exactly where those holes go and um, how to actually build that. We do have three variables on this drawing. We have A, B, C. C is a degree, so 50 degrees on this one right here. A is the width of our product right here, which is uh, 90 millimeters. And then we also have up here B, and you can see B is 45. Again, this drawing is in metric. All the drawings we are doing for this particular practice for the certification will be in metric. None of them will be in inches. So please get used to that concept, measuring everything in grams, um, putting all your units in millimeters for all the dimensions. <clears throat> we do have two other dimensions I want to take note of uh, real quickly. Um, we have this one right here that says R2. Now, if you look at that very carefully and you're like, all right, well, what is that exactly? And I look at my drawing, you can see that's a fillet that's on there. But the fillet isn't stated over and over and over again. Instead, what we can do is we can say typical R2, meaning if you see any other radius, radiuses, sorry, fillets, not radiuses, fillets on this drawing, they're typically going to be a radius of two. Okay, so that's a, a easy way to call out if you only have one of those uh, concepts on your drawing. So we only have one place where the fillets are, and that's on these holes. If if I want to play, uh, put another fillet up here, like on this edge right here, and I don't put it any other dimensions on here to show what that fillet's going to be, but I do have somewhere on the drawing that says typical, that means that that fillet will also be the radius of two. Okay, so that's what that typical R2 means. The other one we have <clears throat> is a true dimension. Well, why do we have a true dimension? Well, because this angle right here isn't really reflective of the actual size of this piece. It's just from this particular bird's eye perspective, we kind of get a distorted view of what that is. It's not rotated flat against us. You can see just by going to the front view right here, this distance from here to here is much longer than from here to here. Even though this is the exact same thing, if I bring this line down, that touches, that touches, so they're the exact same thing, but the, the view is distorted. So if I'm trying to show a circle on a distorted view, and I actually try to use a, a, a protractor or a, a measurement tool on a piece of paper, it's not going to show up the right dimension. So we have to state it for them that, yes, this actually is going to be 7.5 radius. Even though it won't measure that, the true radius is 7.5. And that's what that dimension's on there for. All right, so... Now that we have all that information, let's go ahead and dive into this one. Um, breaking it down real quick, if I'm looking at, again, all the views and saying, okay, which view has the most information? Well, that one for this one is going to be that. So that front view allows us, we can see this outside shape. Uh, I'm going to start with that outside shape right there. I'm going to leave this circle off. I'm going to add that separately because it looks a little bit wider. And if I'm thinking about doing one extrusion, this whole piece is the same width, so you can see this whole piece is 100. It looks like that tube right there 
is five millimeters longer on both sides. So I'm going to do that separately. So let's go ahead and get started on this one. So file new. <clears throat> Again, we're going to make sure MMGS. So we're already set right there. I'm going to go ahead and go front plane sketch. And I'm going to start drawing my shape. So for this one, <clears throat> I'm going to go out here. Or there. And right there. Okay, so I have the basic shape right there. So now what I need to do is go ahead and throw on some dimensions. I'm going to start with A. We already said A was 100. Oh, actually that's incorrect. A was 90. There you go. That's why you look at your dimensions. See, even I make those mistakes from time to time, so we can easily fix that. So A is 90. <clears throat> the rest of the dimensions look like it's going to be on this sheet. So I know I have 10. 15, 25, 20, and a width of 30. And I know that angle is C. So let's go ahead and throw that one on there. We said this one was 25. We said this one was 20. We gave this one 10. We gave this one 15. There we go. And I believe the top there was 30. Yep, 30. And we have one more blue line right here, which that dimension is this 15. So I need to set that width. So right here, that's going to be 15. And there we go. All right, let's go ahead and features, extrude boss. We're going to do this one at 100. There's that 100 dimension. But I do want to go away from me. And the, again, the reason I want to go away is I drew this on the front plane. Okay. If I go ahead and set this in place now with it extruding towards me, my front plane is now on the back of my object. Well, that doesn't make a lot of sense. You want to keep it logically. You want to keep the front plane on the front of the object if you can. So what I'm going to do is instead is on that direction, I'm just going to flip the direction. That way the front plane is the front of the object. Makes sense, right? All right, let's go back to that front plane. I'm going to put a circle. This circle is dead in the center here, so we're going to use that middle point. It's going to pop up. Um, if you're unsure, you can always smart dimension this to the middle. We already know um, the height of that because this whole thing is 45. This was 10. This was 15. So that leaves... 20 left for that dimension, so that means the center should be right at 10. This is a 12 millimeter diameter. You can see that dimension right over here. Features, extrude boss. Okay, now here's a new trick here that we haven't used uh, quite yet. We know that it goes five this direction, but we also need it to go 105 the other direction because we got we start out right here on this front plane, we extrude a 5 this way. Well, now we need to go from here all the way over here, which that is 105. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, this is direction 1. It's going blind 5. We're going to do a direction 2. And we're going to say, yep, we want that one blind as well, but we want this one to go 105. So if I rotate this around, now you can see that object is sticking 5 millimeters out from the other side. All right, that's looking pretty good. We're going to go to the top of the object, sketch. We're going to put in a rectangle. I'm just going to set that over here. And I do want to come past <clears throat> this tube right here. That way I make sure I get the whole surface uh, to be able to cut. Uh, sorry, smart dimension. We're going to put that dimension on there. And that was B. B was 45. And I also have this dimension. It's 10 away from here. And it also looks like it's 10 away from this edge right here. So let's put those dimensions on. I got 45 there. I get 10 away from this edge. And then I also have 10 away from this edge. I can leave this out here. Um, it's not going to hurt anything if it's cutting down that way because it's really not cutting out any object. So I can leave that right where it's at. Features, extrude cut. For this one, I don't really know the distance I need to go. I do know I need to go up to this surface, though. So instead of blind, we're going to say up to surface. Pick your surface. 
There we go. See, now you can see that's connected to that. So if we ever change this dimension, so right now this is 15, say that changes to 10, this cut then moves up with it because it's based on where that surface starts. Very handy tool. All right, that's looking pretty good. We have this cut on the back side here. So I'm going to go to this surface sketch. We have a circular cut right here. And again, that's going to be right on that midpoint. We said the radius was 7.5. That means the diameter is going to be 15. Um, if you're ever unsure and you don't know the math, you can always use this as a calculator. Just do 7.5 times 2. It'll do the math for you. Features, extrude cut. Now we are going to be cutting downward with this one. So we're going to go blind. And I believe the dimension here is 20. Yep, you can see that right there, 20. Throw that dimension in there. Looking good. The only thing we have left to do are these circle cuts right here. So we're going to select on this surface, sketch. And I'm going to start with a circle at the top. I'm going to follow that by a slot, and I'm going to keep it directly in line with this one. And then I have another circle directly in line with that one. Smart dimension, 15, 20, 30, 20, 15, so in reverse order right there. It's 30 away from the edge, and it looks like the diameter of all these is 15. It does look a little wider than 15, but why is that? Well, that's because we do have a 2 millimeter fillet all the way around, which is going to give a, an appearance of an outside circle, even though it's just a rounded edge. Okay, so again, 15, 20, 30, 30 wide, 15 on our diameters. So I'm going to start out here, from here to here, 15, from here to here, 20, this was 30 wide, here to here, 20, and that should leave us with 15 right here. There we go. Okay, we're going 30 from center point to here, and all these should move in line whenever you do that, because I was using that <clears throat> relation point where it actually made all these in line. It, they all should move over. If not, you can do one of two things. You can either dimension them all to 30, or you can use what's a, a, called a coincident feature. So I can click on the center of this circle and control click this one, and I can make these coincident, meaning that they will line up permanently. And you can actually see, I already have it on there. And that's because when I was drawing that, I used that relation line to actually click the center point of there. Okay, smart dimension. We need to make all these 15. Okay, you can see I made that one seven and a half. Why? Because it is a partial circle. So we'll only do radius on that one. So the diameter would be 15, but the radius is seven and a half. 15, that's looking pretty good. Features, extrude cut. We wanna go through all and the reason I'm going to do through all on this one, okay, normally we can just put it in dimension, let it go, but you want to do through all again, in case you change the dimension here, you want that hole to still go all the way through that plate. So if I, right now this is 10, if I change that to say 35 and I only had this blind at 10, well, that's not going to cut all the way through. Now we got to make that relationship happen. That way, when we change one thing, it will change with it. Okay, and the last thing we need to do, actually two things. We need to put on this chamfer here. A lot of people forget this step, and we need to put on these fillets. So first thing, I want to go up to the fillet. I want to make sure my full preview is on. I'm going to set that fillet dimension to 2. I can. There's two ways to do this. I can go and click edge, but then I have to rotate to the bottom to click the other edge. Okay, I need to make sure I get both sides. <clears throat> the other way you can do that is if you know you want it on top and bottom of an object, you can simply click anywhere in the middle face of that object, and it's going to grab both of them automatically. SolidWorks is going to try to understand what you're doing and give you that option to go forward. If you don't like it, you can always unselect it. I'll do the same thing there. So I have six total. You can see those right there. Looks pretty good. Check mark. 
All right, last thing I need to do is set my chamfer. My chamfer is going to be underneath the fillet tool, chamfer. It's gonna ask you two questions. It's gonna have a distance and an angle. Well, if we go back to this, we can see 10 is our distance, 45 degrees is our angle. Got both those in there, good, full preview. So what I wanna do right here is I'm simply gonna select on the line that I'm trying to clip. I'm not trying to go from here to here. I'm gonna select on that edge and you're gonna see that chamfer pop up saying, I'm gonna cut across that at 10 millimeters at 45 degrees. Check mark, and there we go. Go ahead and put on your material. Go ahead and weigh your mass. Um, put your answer in the, in the little quiz bank, and we'll go forward from here. All right, see you at the next part.